Let's go ahead. Thanks, Jeff. So are you concerned that the focus of your players will be affected this week with regards to their feelings about uh, Illinois recruiting them in the summer? Uh, no, not, not at all, Rich. Uh, we, uh, we started off uh, yesterday and had a really good team meeting reviewing the Temple game, uh, things we, we, we did well and things we didn't do well. And uh, I believe that as we sit here today, we've got their attention on a very good uh, Illinois team and, and a tough game coming up in Champaign. Bob Flanders in Harrisburg. Yeah, Bill, is, uh, is your tailback Bill Belton? Is he ready to go this week? And, and if, how does the healthy Belton kind of change what you can do on offense? Uh, he practiced yesterday and uh, looked, looked decent. So we, we would anticipate him being ready to go for the game. And, uh, <laughs> You know, it's a good question, Bob, because all, all of these kids bring a little bit different skill set to the table, whether it's uh, Zordich, Swinak, Dukes, uh, Belton, and then obviously Derek Day. You know, some guys are first and second down guys, some guys are three down guys, uh, some guys are a little bit quicker, some guys are bigger, some guys are a little bit faster, you know, some guys catch the ball better. So, you, you know, Billy's a guy that uh, has good feet, got good vision, and, uh, and can catch the football. So. Uh, it's good to have him back because it's another type of uh, change of pace type of running back. Derek Labarson, Wilkesbury. Yeah, several four games in. Uh, is this an all start to feel like a normal football season for you now as you get close from July and that first game? Uh, did you say normal football season? Yeah, just I mean, getting back to normal at all for you. Getting in the group. Well, uh, you know, once training camp started, it felt pretty normal. You know, you're, you're practicing uh, once or twice a day, and you're getting into the routine there in training camp, and then school starts and the regular season starts, so now you're into the routine of <clears throat> practicing in the afternoon and meetings in the afternoon and study hall at night for the kids and game planning and things. So it's felt pretty normal uh, uh, really right from the start of training camp on. Mark Woganrich in Allentown. I know, did you, what is your philosophy on playing backup quarterbacks? Do you believe it's important for a backup to get playing time? I believe it's important to win the game. So uh, we, we, we do what's best for the football team to win the football game. And uh, I'm not a big believer in rotating quarterbacks, and we're not going to do that here uh, as we sit here right now. Matt McGloin's our starting quarterback. Stephen Bench is our backup quarterback, and, uh, and that's the way we're headed. <clears throat> Frank Bodani in York. Hi, Bill. After watching the film, do you have any more insight into maybe why all the penalties at once? How hard is it for you to correct that? It looked like maybe some guys involved on this big play that were called back were flagged for things that actually weren't even maybe necessarily involved in the big run, so to speak. There, there, were, uh, there were some penalties there that, that are definitely correctable. Uh, holding calls, keeping your hands inside, moving your feet, uh, those, those are correctable through technique and, and really harping on it. And at the end of the day, it's, it's about emphasis. And so what we try to do is emphasize that in the film room. Hey, look, you know, if you move your feet better on this and keep your hands inside better on this, then, then you're not going to be called for holding. So uh, alignment penalties, those are just mental errors that we have to clean up. Uh, the offensive pass interference penalty, uh, we just we got to do a better job of not committing offensive pass interference. But uh, you know, overall, those are those are things that are that are correctable, and we we're, we started working on that yesterday. Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia. Uh, hi, Bill. Uh, when did you find out that the Big Ten said you would be eligible to win the leaders' division title? And does that have a role in your motivational message uh, to the team for beginning this week with the Big Ten schedule start? Uh, I think. We I believe we found out about that maybe right before the first or second games. I think it was right before the first or second game. What we, what we try to do, Joe, is, is really just uh, focus on the game for that week. So we try to break it down into uh, 12 one-game seasons. And so we've played four, and now we're focused on the fifth game, the Illinois game. We, we don't think about anything down the road. We just know that we only have eight more opportunities left to play, and we're, we're going to practice extremely hard and, and prepare for a very difficult Illinois team. Mike Gross in Lancaster. Hi, Bill. Uh, last week, 
some uh, no huddle stuff. Uh, I thought maybe a little more throwing to the back, throwing to the running backs. Uh, did, that, did that reflect that you guys are figuring out the offense a little more, or was that sort of a moment specific to Temple? Well, uh, we'll have a no huddle game plan going into every game, and. Uh, the flow of the game basically determines how much you're going to use no huddle. And, and when, you, when you play a team that pressures quite a bit, no huddle becomes more in, involved in your game plan. Our, our players are doing a really good, it's, it's really a pretty neat to see, you know, again, like I always say, I don't know where this season's going to end up. I know our, our players are working really hard. And what's really kind of cool to see is that from the first day of spring practice, to where they are now as far as knowledge of the systems, offense, defense, and special teams is, is pretty, as a coach, that's what coaching is all about, is, is teaching and, and watching your players pick it up, which is, I, I believe our players have picked it up pretty well to this point. And, but no huddle is a part of every game plan. Donnie Collins and Scranton. Hi, Bill. How was Matt McGloin's decision-making in the line of scrimmage before the play and then getting the team in the proper play call through the He's he's improved every week with that, and uh, that's a another really good question. You guys are loaded with good questions today. He uh, <laughs> that that is a difficult but one of the things in, in playing quarterback in, in a system like ours is is we put a lot on your plate, so to speak, and and you have to. Uh, have a good deal of brain power and you have to be able to uh, understand what you're watching on film and be able to take that to the practice field and then take it to the game field and every week he's improved on on what he sees and, and getting us into the right play and, and do, using little tricks of the trade to help himself uh, to, to get us into the right play. So I believe he's improved every week and, and we, we showed him the tape yesterday and, and he knows that he can he can continue to improve a lot and play a lot better than he's playing right now. And so, uh, like I told him yesterday, a lot of it's up to him and just him continuing to work and, and going out there and, and executing even better at a higher level than he is right now. Scott Brown, Pittsburgh. To this season, I'm wondering if you ever got an explanation as to why that wasn't just a one-time deal and also if you think that's fair to your, you, your staff, and your players. Hey, Scott, could you repeat your question? We missed the beginning of it, please. <coughs> yeah, the uh, recruitment of your players is going to become an issue again after the season. And I was just wondering if you ever got an explanation as to why that was more than just a one-time thing. And also, if, if you think that's fair to you, your staff, and your players. Uh, I'll tell you this. I believe our players are uh, committed to this football program, and uh, I believe that uh, they're a fantastic group of kids that believe in the coaching staff. We certainly believe in them. Uh, again, like I've said from day one, this is a very, very, in my opinion, special place because of the education that this place offers a young man and, and the ability. You know, having only been here for four games, again, I'm a, I'm a Penn State newbie. You know, I. I've run out here for for for, uh, for two home games here, and uh, and and or actually three home games here, and felt uh, felt the, the 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 uniqueness of this place, the crowd, the band. I mean, where else would you want to play? So, you know, as far as um, you know, the recruitment of our players and things like that, you know, that's that's something that uh, I'm going to keep to myself. Uh, my thoughts on that and. Uh, and continue to discuss the strategy that's involved with that with our staff and our and our administration here. Okay, right at this point we'll take questions.